This sidewalk uses NO Quixel assets. And yes, this is Nanite Vertex painting. Hello friends, welcome to part two of Street Design from the Unreal Engine Environment Realism Breakdown series. In this episode, we focus on the second key element of a street, the sidewalk. I created three materials of the same pavement type in Substance Designer. One normal, one damaged, and one destroyed. You can download all three for free from the link I've placed in the description. I import all three textures into Unreal Engine. But you should note that Unreal compresses them and slightly reduces the albedo color. First, we reduce the texture brightness a bit. Then we enable sRGB and increase the saturation to get closer to the original texture. Also, make sure to set the compression format to BC7. Material setup. Now we move on to creating our material, which will be a blend material, but this time we won't use Quixel's blend materials. We convert the material to material attributes. We import the textures and create a set material attributes. Adding inputs for base color, metallic, ambient occlusion, normal, roughness, displacement. To control tiling, we add a texture coordinate multiply it, and promote the value to a parameter called tile amount, with a default value of 1. To add offset control, we first add an add node, then an append node to control X and Y inputs, and connect them back into the add node. These are then connected to the textures. For the normal map, we add flatten normal, create a parameter, and multiply it by minus one. So when we increase the value, the detail is inverted if needed. We connect ambient occlusion to its input. For displacement, we multiply it and promote it to a parameter with a custom name. To keep everything organized, we group the parameters so later we can control each texture separately.
Since all textures are from the same set, we use the same tiling value, so their scale stays consistent. I create the second material in the same way, just don't forget to create a separate parameter group for it. To make the setup reusable, we create material functions for each texture set. Blending materials. Now it's time to blend the materials. We add blend material attributes and connect two material functions. For the alpha, we use vertex color, specifically the red channel. From a modeling menu, we add a simple box to test the material. To enable displacement, we turn on Nanite for the mesh. We create a material instance and apply it to the mesh. To make displacement work, we enable tessellation in both the base material and the material instance. If the damaged texture appears in the wrong place, we simply swap the blend inputs. If it still doesn't work, make sure Nanite is enabled on the mesh. Now we can control displacement separately for each texture. Vertex paint with Nanite. To paint vertex colors with Nanite, go to the modeling menu. Choose attributes paint vertex colors. Use fill black to apply the base material. To activate the red channel used as a mask, enable red channel and paint on the mesh. Set the material mode to original to preview the painting. Once you're happy, click accept to see the displacement update correctly. I also created the third material and assigned it its own function. Just like before, we blend it by connecting. The first input to B, the second blend to A. This time, we use the green channel for vertex color as the alpha. Now we have three blended materials.
You can duplicate sidewalk meshes and paint variations, or add new meshes and paint them individually. For more variation, you can also rotate the meshes. Finally, to improve realism even more, you can add elements like fallen leaves, trash, debris, trash bins either manually or using foliage tools. I'll show you the rest of the video in fast forward and there's no need for further explanation. As I mentioned, this part is just about adding a few extra elements, which we won't go into in detail in this episode. Thank a lot for watching this video. I really appreciate your support. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to like, subscribe, and share it with others who are into Unreal Engine and environment art. And don't forget to stay tuned for the next parts of this series, where we'll move forward and dive into buildings and architectural details to push our street -y.